mover in and behind the material. So you can't have the material without the spiritual, and you can't have the spiritual without the material. That's the meiotic balance of the universe. That's what Professor George G.M. James is talking about in Stolen Legacy. That's what Dr. Ben is talking about in his great works that he has given to us. That's what Dr. John Henry Clark is talking about. Dr. Asa Hilliard. Yes, Dr. Jake Carruthers. Dr. Maulana Karenga. This is what the scholars among us is talking about. This is what Sheikh Antidia is talking about. This is what Dr. Ivan Van Sertima is talking about. This is what Dr. Richard King, Brother Carol Barnes, and many others. This is what they are talking about when they tell us about this meiotic balance and the balance in the nature of the black man and black woman and how we gave religion and science and law and art and music and math mathematics and civilization and religion and ethics and morality to this no good cracker who was crawling around on his all fours in the caves and hills of Europe, a savage in Europe. All praise is due to Allah. We pattern our lives today after a cave man and after a cave woman that just crawled out of the caves and hills of Europe and walk around the day with an attache case smelling like Pierre Cardin and smelling like uh, Uchi and Gucci and Gucci and all that other stuff. This is a cave man. He spent 2,000 years, she spent 2,000 years in the caves and hills of Europe. I'm still talking about the goddamn white man. <laughs> Spent 2,000 years in the caves and hills of where? E U R O P E. This man, Elijah Muhammad, and this man, Louis Farrakhan, they teach us that E U means caves and hillside. Europe, Eureka, you've heard the term. EU means caves and hillside. Rough is self-explanatory. They were roughed or bound or confined within the caves and hills of Europe for 2,000 years. And for 2,000 years, this blue-eyed devil crawls around on his all fours. He ate his meat raw. They ate each other either. They ate dogs. They ate anything. They take tree limbs and bust an animal in the head or drop a rock or a boulder on the animal and bust the animal in the head. Blood everywhere, all in the mangy, diseased fur of the animal. Drag the animal back to the cave. And the little baby devils and the medium-sized devils and the mama devil and the daddy devil and the uncle devil and the auntie devil and the cousin devil and the grandma devil and the grandpa devil, all of them within start biting on the nasty hair and fur of this dead, bloody animal lying right there in the cave. They didn't know anything about fire. Yeah, when they first discovered fire, they damn near ran off the cliff. Gee whiz, gee manini, what is this? Really, they couldn't make it in, they couldn't even talk in those days. How many of you saw the movie Quest for Fire? Hold your black hands up. If you saw Quest for Fire, in Quest for Fire, you saw But they tell you you were a savage. They want you to believe that you were a savage. They walked around out in Ooga Booga. They're the ones that put the lie on us, but they were the ones who go, I ain't sign language and all kind of stuff. You can always talk. There's never been a time when you couldn't talk black man. And we know it ain't never been a time when you couldn't talk black woman. <laughs> Sister, they got something to say. Because she's the first teacher. The children, the babies, they learn the language from her. They don't call it the father tongue, they call it the what? Why they call it the mother tongue instead of the other tongue? They call it the mother tongue because it is mother who fills them with the spirit of life. It is mother who inspires them, giving them inspiration and information that moves them along the course of life. And so they call it the mother tongue because the goddess is the one who breathes that life into them. Y'all still with me? We still talking about the goddamn white man. All of 
these thoughts running through my head. I don't want to miss anything. So, for 2,000 years, he was in the caves and hills of Europe. They'd bring no mangy animal in the cave, and they would bite on the animal and eat the animal raw. Then they would leave the animal right there in the cave. And the stench and decomposition coming up from the animal's life was just a matter of fact. It was just a part of the daily routine. For 2,000 years, the white man and white woman lived in the caves and hills of Europe, roped, bound, confined in Europe, living worse than in the dark ages. He did his number one in the cave. You know what number one is. <laughs> he did his number two in the cave, too. <laughs> so for 2,000 years in that same cave, he did his number one. For 2,000 years in that same cave, he did his number two. Can you imagine walking around in your number one and your number two generation after generation? Can you imagine not just walking around in your number two, but can you imagine lying down to go to sleep every night right there in your urination and your defecation? And that's what they did for 2,000 years in the caves and hills of Europe. For 2,000 years, that's what they did. And today they still like their meat raw. Don't they? Some of you go to the restaurants, you try to act like white folks, don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> you haven't even been to that kind of fancy restaurant before, you're trying to show off. You know how you can fix them big, beautiful, thick African lips all over to the side. <laughs> I can get proper when you like to get proper. <laughs> you're trying to listen to the white folks at the next table so you can decide what you go on. And they say, I'll have a prime rib in cut. You say, yeah, that sounds like that's pretty good. So you think you cool, you straight now. But then the waiter asks the next question. How would you like that, sir? How would you like that, ma'am? And you heard the white folks say, I'll have mine red. You say, well, hell, that must mean it's a, a real special kind of snake, a steak. If it's rare, it must not be no more steaks like that one in the, in the whole restaurant. So I got to show off for my lady, so I'm going to get a rare in cut prime rib that ain't got no more cuts like that because it's rare. It must be a special steak. And so you sitting there proper, waiting, holding your cancer stick in your hand, Puffing on a poison nicotine weed that the goddamn white man gave you, foul on one end and a fool on the other end of the cigarette. You sitting there waiting, and they bring it with the blood all in the plate, and then you lose your coolness. You ain't proper no more. You lose all of that. I don't want this here. What you bring me this here for with all this blood? I don't want this. With all this, I thought it was rap. He said, well, sir, oh, ma'am, it is rare. They still eat their meat raw today. They like to eat it with the blood running out. They like to taste the blood. They got blood pie. They got blood pudding. They got a pudding called boudin. Blood. And they sit down and eat it like it's Hunt's or Heinz tomato sauce. Big tablespoon of blood. I say, isn't it great, honey? She said, yes, it's wonderful. Pass me the escargot. That's another thing they hang you up on. They say, we, our special today is escargot ugu-hukishi. <laughs> you don't know what the hell it is. And they bring it to you and you find out it's nails. And them African lips get straight then. You're not proper anymore then. You're not holding that little, you know how you can hold that little finger up when you're trying to get proper. So I don't know damn snails. I don't eat no snails. Crawling sl white folks love snails. They even have another delicacy that they call mountain oysters. That's the male organ of the bull. 